Alright, hi guys. I'm going to show you how to do a four corner pin track on this piece of footage. It's a laptop. We're going to do a screen replacement. So we're running our footage. Remember the first thing you need to do is have your cursor under the node graph area. Hit S. This brings up your project settings or otherwise known as the globals. We'll need to have the same frame range as our footage. I'm double clicking on my footage. It is from frame range 1 to 81. So scroll down back to our project settings. So project settings, frame range 1 to 81. Also the size, if we look at our footage, HD 1080. So we're going to match that under full size for format. We'll go to HD 1080. All right, I'm going to close this out. You can just hit this to close out all those properties. So the first thing we need to do is we need to bring in a tracker. So tab, tracker. And then connect it directly to your footage. I usually leave my tracker onto the side of the footage because we'll be creating a corner pin track from this. All right, I'm hitting spacebar. Go back to our view of both the viewer and the viewer uh, node graph area. So on the tracker, double clicking on it, you'll get the tracker setting, project settings, and properties. We're going to add four tracks, one for every corner. Now we can track either these tracking points or we can track the actual corner of the monitor. Since we're doing a four corner pin, it's pretty easy just to grab these corners. If we go through our footage real quick, it's not that much of a move. So let's back to frame one. I'm going to add four tracks by hitting the add track here. Now I'll eventually have to have these selected, so I'll go ahead and select the T, R, and the S. So that stands for Transform, Rotation, and Scaling. And going here, I'm going to hit my spacebar so I can get a little better look. I like getting close into my footage. I'll place the track there. Place the track on this corner. Place the track on this corner. And my other track here. So the best thing to do is actually have your inside area of your track, which is the place where it needs to always be about the same. So your tracking data will, you know, use this as a reference to be within the tracking area. I'm going to do this to every one of the of these trackers. I'm going to get them a little bit smaller so they're just on the laptop itself. I don't want to have anything from the outside in it. And since we're doing a corner pin track and I'm trying to get close to these corners, these are going to be where the corner is going to lay, right on this little crosshair. So I want to get that right into that corner. All right, now the outside looks pretty good. It doesn't really move that much. I'm going to go and hit my spacebar again so I can go to the all my panels. Select all my tracking points, track one through four. I'm going to go up here. Since we're on frame one, we're going to track to the end. That's this little arrow here, track to end. I'm going to hit it and go ahead and let it track. Put this out of the way so I can actually see the result. As you see, the outside picture is not changing any, but what's inside is. That's because it's only using the large squares area to actually think. This is reduces the amount of time that it has to take to track. So the larger the outside squares are, the more information it needs to look at. 
Now, if it moves very fast, that'll be a different story. We might have to make them a little larger. Okay, so we reached the, the end at frame 81. And just looking at my trackers, they look pretty good. They look like they've done a pretty good job for themselves. So, let's go this up. We have a tracker that has four points tracked. They're all selected. I'm going to go to the corner pin 2D. It's the very first of the selection on the export bar down here. I'm on the first frame because it's going to use the current frame to set my reference point. Hit create and then see how it has made a little transform. If we double click on it, it's a corner pin 2D transform node. It has all your information keyed in here. So the next thing I want to do is I need to bring in a piece of footage. I am just going to use a piece of test footage. I'm going to hit tab checker and that comes up as checkerboard. And I'm going to connect this to my corner pin 2D. And I also want to put this over my footage. So I'm going to use an over note. I'm going to hit O. For, sorry, that's for Roto. I'm going to hit M for merge. I'm going to leave it as the default over. This is A. This is B. A goes over B. And I'm going to use my number one buffer to look at my merge. And we'll see that my checkerboard has taken all my real estate. It hasn't used the corner pin 2D node yet. It's set to default. So I'm going to double click on my corner pin 2D. And then I'm going to go to where it says from. It's a little tab here. From tab. I'm going to set to input. And what that does, I'll zoom in here to look at it, is taking every corner from here from the picture, from the checkerboard, and brought it down to fit right inside the computer. Now if I hit play, I'll scale in a look, you'll see that my checkerboard picture, which is just a 2D image, is now moving perfectly within the constraints of my corner pin. So it looks like the computer now has a checkerboard on the monitor face. All right. So that is how to do a checkerboard quarter pin. We could use any kind of other film image here. Let's see if I wanted to take piece of footage. Here's my bus London footage. Open it up. Now the problem with this footage, it starts at frame 125. We need this footage to start at 1, so I need to use a time remapping. So I hit T and hit T I M E, and we see that we have several different type of time nodes. We're going to use a time offset. This is going to offset the time by whatever the footage is. So if it starts at 125, double clicking on my time offset, I need to subtract it by 125. And what this will do is, I'll hit stop so we can see our thumbnail. This, what this takes is that it tells that frame 125 now is going to be pushed all the way to frame zero. So now we have our footage showing here. I'm going to use this instead of the checkerboard. So I'm going to take the input of the, I'm going to take the input of the corner pin 2D and bring it to the time offset. Hit tab. Then I'll notice that Oh, this doesn't fit 100% the same way. Well, that's because if we look at the size of the checkerboard, that's HD 1080. We look at the size of the bus, that's HD 720. Now, we could either do a reformat, 
Or we can go into the time, uh, corner pin 2D node. I said double clicked on it. Go back to the from and hit set to input again. And that has stretched our bus footage now into fitting into our computer monitor. And do it. See how it was before? This is how it was when it didn't fit. Go to my corner pin. I'm double clicking on it. That's inside my properties plane. From set to input. And that's going to stretch my input points in. Hit play. Now my bus footage plays inside of my computer. We'll get a bigger view of this. Let it load through. Now my bus footage is playing on my laptop on a desk inside the offices. Now this wouldn't be what I would call finished, but is a good start of actually just understanding what the corner pin does. It's taking each tracking point for every corner and applying a transform and it's scaling to match the footage. All right. Okay. So any questions, go ahead and email me or ask me in class. We can cover this again. Thank you very much.